For the third time in three weeks, tracking a hit and run case where a driver took off after hitting someone on the side of a road. More than 25 law enforcement officers from all over central Kentucky are raising money for Special Olympics Kentucky today. It is a steamy day across central and eastern Kentucky as temperatures continue to climb, and they will continue to do so throughout the afternoon and evening. It could get close to 90. I'll have the latest track on the temps coming up for you. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at Noon. Good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Barbara Bailey. Bill has the day off. The search continues this midday for a driver who hit a pedestrian on a busy central Kentucky road. Police say a passerby found the man lying in the middle of Wilkinson Boulevard around 4 o'clock this morning. The man suffered serious injuries but is expected to survive. WKYT's Mark Barber has the latest in the investigation. It's our top story at noon. Mark? The debris has now been cleared from the road, and Wilkinson Boulevard here in Frankfurt has been back open to traffic now for hours. But police say they are still looking for the hit and run driver who crashed into a man here. Investigators say someone who was driving on Wilkinson Boulevard near Fair Oaks Lane noticed a body in the road around 4:20 this morning. Officers tell us when they got here, they found a man who had been hit by a car. We're told he doesn't have life-threatening injuries, but he does have several broken bones. Police say the driver who crashed into the man while he was walking in the road didn't stop. It's at least the third case in central Kentucky in three weeks where a driver ran after hitting someone on the side of the road. Last week, 20 year old David Bell was killed after he was hit by a car while he was walking along a road in Scott County. Two weeks before that, a bicyclist, Mark Hinkle, was killed in Scott County when a car crashed into him. Officers say the hit and run cases are a sad reminder that pedestrians can't trust drivers to follow the rules of the road. If you have to walk on a roadway where there isn't a sidewalk, stay as far to the right as possible, uh, up in the grass. Never walk in a median if you can. Uh, those kind of things should help prevent incidents like this. Investigators say they haven't been able to find any witnesses yet, so they don't have a description of the vehicle that crashed into the man this morning. They're now asking anyone with information to call them. In Frankfurt, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. Now, if the driver is caught, police say they would interview the driver before deciding what charges he or she would face. We're told at the very least the driver would be charged with leaving the scene of an accident. There's still no word on what sparked a late night fire in Lexington. That fire broke out just after 9 o'clock last night at the East Ridge Apartments on Alumni Drive. Firefighters were able to keep the flames contained to some shutters on the outside of the building, and no one was hurt. A convicted rapist will have to wait a little longer before finding out how long he'll spend behind bars. Sentencing for Perico Coffee has been pushed back until next week. He was convicted of kidnapping, sodomy, and rape. Coffee kidnapped a stranger from the Speedway on Versailles Road back in 2013. U.S. Marshals later arrested him in Michigan. The jury recommended he spend 46 years behind bars. He's set to be sentenced next week. A man charged with a robbery in Lexington will face a judge in less than an hour. Jack Morrow was arrested overnight at his apartment on Hollow Creek Road. He's charged in a holdup that happened just before 3 a.m. on June 4th. We reported an armed robbery at the Marathon gas station on Russell Cave Road that morning. Some tense moments overnight after shots were fired into a Lexington home. Police found several shell casings outside a home on Lisa Drive off North Broadway. At least one bullet went through a wall inside that home. No one inside was hurt. The people living there said they didn't see anyone and don't know why someone would shoot at them. That shooting is just the latest in a week of violence here in Lexington. In response, Community Inspired Solutions has announced plans to host a town hall meeting later this month. Organizers hope to generate ideas about how to make the community safer. That meeting will be held Monday, June 22nd at the Northside Library on Russell Cave Road. Well, temperatures are not quite as high today, but we're still flirting with the 90s and we'll see higher humidity levels. The rain chances also increase this weekend. WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell is live now in our First Alert Weather Center with a look ahead. Jimmy?
It is pretty warm out there today, Barb. And another factor that's really going to step it up is the humidity, which always makes it feel even worse. And that's what you're going to find out there as we head through the rest of the day today. Mid 80s, we're at 85 right now in Lexington. We're about a degree or two off of where we were yesterday. So we'll come in just under where we were yesterday as well, which was 90 degree high. It's 85 in Lexington, 84 in Danville, Richmond, and more low 80s are showing up in eastern parts of Kentucky. It's been slower to warm out there the past few days. Feels like temperature. The heat index, it feels like 91 already in Frankfurt, and it feels like 89 here in Lexington. So it's four degrees warmer when you factor in the humidity. So it's getting very uncomfortable out there. As we look at Defender, a little bit of shower activity developing close to I 65, and a few more dots now showing up down across McCrary and parts of Whitley County. As we plan ahead, an isolated storm around here during the one o'clock hour up to 86, maybe up to 89 by five o'clock. Few storms linger into the late evening hours, and we'll have more chances through the weekend. We will break it down coming up a little bit more here in just a few minutes for you. <laughs> All right, Jimmy, thank you. Republican nominee for governor Matt Bevan may have violated state ethics laws. The Ethics Commission says Bevan did not disclose his positions with two companies on his financial dis disclosure statement. His campaign managers say Bevan did disclose his position as the sole owner of the company that owns the two companies in question. But an Ethics Commission director said the commission would likely find that Bevan should disclose all of his positions with every business. The Fayette County School District hopes to have a new principal in place at Bryan Station by the start of the school year. Bryan Station was the focus of a diagnostic review conducted by the State Education Commissioner. Much of the results released recently showed the district has done little to fix the problems the state pointed out more than a year ago. When you talk about this diagnostic, you seem frustrated. Uh, yeah, I'm frustrated that uh, the passion and the sense of urgency was not there in the district office. Now tonight on WKYT News at 6, we'll sit down with the Education Commissioner and Fayette County's School Board President as they talk about closing the achievement gap in Fayette County. It's an unusual sight, a donut shop in Lexington. Police officers are reaching new heights at the Krispy Kreme on Richmond Road. They're camping out on the roof over the next two days as part of the fundraiser, which helps raise money for the Special Olympics. WKYT's Mike Linden has reaction from this annual event. For 12 hours today, law enforcement officers from all over central Kentucky are spending time on the roof of Krispy Kreme raising money for a special cause. Officers from UK police, Lexington police, and even agents with the ATF are collecting donations for Special Olympics Kentucky on the roof of Krispy Kreme Donuts on Richmond Road in Lexington today. Last year, officers raised a little more than $2,000. All collected donations go directly towards Special Olympics athletes to help pay for travel expenses and equipment cost. We're giving uh, uh, adults and children with intellectual disabilities the opportunity to you know, participate in the state games and uh, take, do other activities. Uh, so again, you know, whatever we can do to give them a chance to show courage and determination and grit, uh, we're all about that. Officers will be on the roof until 6 o'clock this evening, but if you glaze over the details of how you can donate, you can still go to the Special Olympics Kentucky website for more information. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. Now, officers in Louisville are also camping out on the roof of the Krispy Kreme there to raise money for Special Olympics.